Christianity and the Occult, delivered by Dr. Kurt Koch at the Covenant First Presbyterian Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. These lectures were given on November 5th, 1973. Dr. Kurt Koch is a theologian, lecturer, counselor, and author of more than 60 titles with a total circulation of over 2 million copies. Dr. Koch is regarded by many to be the world's leading authority on the occult. He was born on November 16, 1913 in West Germany. He was reared in a Lutheran home and was converted on his 17th birthday. Dr. Koch studied at the universities of Heidelberg and Tübingen and received the Ph.D. degree from Tübingen with a dissertation on the relation between theology and medical psychology. He was ordained to the Lutheran clergy and was a pastor for over 22 years. Popular demand has led him to itinerant missionary and lecturing work on all continents. Dr. Koch has preached and lectured in more than 120 countries around the world, including Australia, New Zealand, Japan, India, all East Asian countries, many islands, Africa, Canada, Greenland, and the United States. He has spoken at more than 100 colleges, universities, and seminaries including Wheaton College, Moody Bible Institute, Fuller Theological Seminary, and other well-known schools in America. In Dr. Koch's own words, occultism, spiritism, magic, and fortune-telling are increasing in all parts of the world. This is a sign of the end time and the near coming of the Lord. But Christians, including pastors and theological students, are not equipped to counsel people who have come under bondage by sins of sorcery. Therefore, I give courses and training seminars on all continents. The following is an address by Dr. Kurt Koch entitled Fortune Telling, Astrology, Palm Reading, and Their Effects. It was delivered at 7 p.m. on Sunday, November 5, 1972 at the Covenant First Presbyterian Church in Cincinnati, Ohio.
25 years of ministry, I have met the thousands of such examples. Therefore, I must inform and warn leaders, even if I meet this misunderstanding. The verse in Ezekiel 3 17 became my special commission. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. To fight with the power of the darkness is a dangerous battle. Therefore, I cover the intercession of understanding Christians. Before we enter this dark field of fortune telling, I want to say, under what conditions this can only be done. Paul writes in Colossians 2 15, Christ can be spoiled against principalities and power. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. We are dealing with a terrible enemy, but his power has been broken at one place, at the cross of Calvary. The cross is the sign of victory. Since Jesus' death and resurrection, we are standing on victor's ground. Christians are not only a lost foe, but are standing in the vanguard of the victor. If we have the victor begging on us, then we need not fear. It matters not how the enemy is waiting. First of all, I want to give you a brief Introduction. The oldest forms of fortune telling are the divine cross and pendulum. They are about 6,000 years old. The pendulum is a metal ray hanging from a thread. In the Sahara Desert and in the orange leaf space, Cave drawings have been discovered which originate from the Middle Stone Age. Stone Age man has used the rod of pendulum to turn it for water. Then we find the use of the pendulum in old China. In the Sia dynasty, 4,000 years ago, there were pendulum users who served for suitable building sites. Then you find a lot of the pendulum with the trees as well as the road, also with the Islamic tribe. Again, we find it in the Middle Ages and up to the present time of our European civilization. I think this morning in the service we had a pendulum user here in this church. Astrology has a similar history. He can trace it back 5,000 years to the Sumerians and Akkadians. Again, we find it with the Babylonians and Chaldeans. There it was the art of the priests who cast horoscopes for the kings and priests. Astrology is always to be found where a flourishing civilization is beginning to decay. Therefore, some sociologists say astrology is a sign of national decay. We can observe this in the case of the Greeks and Romans, who have seen also holds true today for Europe and maybe for your country. Palmistry has also thousands of years of history. About 4,000 years. The Babylonians divided the human hand into four compelling areas to which they gave astrological names. The hand is divided into a moon mount, mouth mount, widow mount, sun mount, Mercury mount, Venus mount. Then the four main lines of the human hand are supposed to have special significance. There is a half line, a head line, a life line, 
and the straight line. Women have four lines. The men have already three lines. The men are without a half line. But women who watch their men around also do not have a half line. <laughs> now you can check if you are the boss for your husband. But this was only a show. Card reading has two dials here over history. The Roman used back feathers on which fingers they are engraved. In the 8th century, the blade card was famous and developed. These cards are not only used to pass the time, the means for entertainment, but also to tell thoughts. Psychometry is a recent science. The expression comes from American psychology and means to measure the soul. The psychometrist takes an object in his hand, and from this object he can give out information about his soul. Though the science is still young, the custom has been practiced for thousands of years. Scientists just not have explored this field of thought really before. The statistic forms of thought really are almost as old as mankind itself. We find the count of the dead in all nations and at all times of the history of mankind. This count is not being carried on just for the memory of the dead, but also for the curiosity of the living. After this historic introduction, I give you some examples out of my counseling work. I do not violate the seed of confession and permission to mention to publish this experience. First, an example out of the area of astrology. The woman appeared at the police station and stated that she had shot her son. At first, the policeman did not believe her statement. But upon investigating the case, it was found out that she had told the girl. The mother was arrested. She stated that an astrologer had cast a mother's soul for her son. In it, he had predicted that the son would become insane. The mother had wanted to save her son from this faith. Therefore, she had killed him. After a long trial, the woman received a long sentence. The smaller children free. You see, that here the problem is better than God, whether the theology is true or not. But what are the effects of the problem? Another example. Two years ago, I met with a classic counseling case. A young woman from North Germany wrote me that her aunt, who had engaged in Christianism for years, had prophesied her that she would die in her 30th year. Now she was 29 and believed she had had only six months to live. I wrote her that she should not place her life, that she should place her life completely under the protection of Jesus. Then she would not have to fear the problem. For a long time, I heard nothing else from her. Then six months later, the parents wrote me that their daughter had committed suicide shortly before her thirtieth birthday. Among the sort of letters they had found my counseling letter. The parents thanked me for encouraging their daughter. But it had been too late. It was not possible for me to talk to this young woman personally, 
finished the little too far for me. The parents asked me what they should do about this pessimistic art. They would prove a religious prophecy and driven their thoughts off to her bed. One should turn over such people to the authority, because this was a case of psychic well. It is a sad thing that the law cannot help us here. Another example, out of the field of pharmacy, but out you must test my poor English because I don't have to be sharp in my manuscript. I must not try with my weak English to tell you a story. It was in Austria. The gypsy read the portion for some beauty. Also were girls who is now a medical doctor. My report. She gave me permission to mention her experience in public. To one boy, to one student, the gypsy refused to predict the future. The students went on, but then they asked a young professor who accompanied them, Professor. Please go back, ask the gypsy why does she reject it to tell the fortune to our friend. The professor went back, the gypsy explained, I didn't like to give the future to this young man because he will die, it takes me a violent death. The professor came back, but the student concern was not informed. The six weeks passed by. Nothing happened. Then one day, a telegram arrived from Salzburg. The father of the student was dying. And the student had to go home. His friend accompanied him to the train station in Prague. The train started for Salzburg. Some hours later, the message came over radio. The last car of this train derailed. And the student was among the dead. You see, that is a true case of fortune telling. I do not say that all fortune telling is fraud or hope or swindle. Sometimes there are genuine cases. But all the cases, either is true or not, are dangerous for our spiritual life. There should be a way to prohibit the whole business of astrology and fortune. They are responsible for the psychic murder of thousands of people. Instead, they are given opportunity on radio and television and in our newspapers to advertise their demonic business and invite people to try it. At the moment, I'm reminded of another case, but I don't have it in my manuscript. must have my poor English again. I was in Brazil, August and September this year, for the seventh time. I spoke in a small town, Panami. The people there have German background, and I was surprised. They speak the Pennsylvania Dutch in Brazil. 
That means they are the same settlers as those in Pennsylvania. They come from the same district in Germany, the southern district in Germany. They speak exactly the same dialect as the Pennsylvania does. But they live in Pennsylvania. I was in this small town now several times, ten years ago, eight years ago, and now August, September, and of this year. I had a young couple in my country in The lady went to a smaller shop eight years ago. At that time, she was not yet married. She gave her birthday, and the birthday of her friend, and the astrologer informed her, you will never marry. You will lose your friend. The girl was horrified and terrified and afraid to lose her friend. And thoughts of suicide came into her head. And she tried to do it. But the friend hindered her. Then she came for counseling. She confessed everything. Gave her life to the Lord. And God forgave her for her sins. Some days later, also, her friend came for counseling. Both are married now for about six or seven years and have three children, they are very happy. You see, for the astrologer predicted for the life. And nearly he had driven this girl to, to suicide. Therefore, I long to use the fortune. I have given you some strange examples dealing with murder, fear of death, suicide. But we think the problem of Boston Valley has not at all been sufficiently prevented. There are more, there are many experiences of Boston Valley which are not so dramatic. I will point out a few of them. Last winter, in a German town, a girl said before me, she told me that for two years she had been trying to find a way to drive, but had not found it. When she wanted to pray and close her eyes, she would have written in German. When she tried to read the Bible, she felt as if her vision were obstructed by Paul. If she went to church, she felt not created. But she wanted to find Christ at any price. She thought the girl who consulted psychiatrists, these symptoms would be diagnosed as absent or absent mindedness. A psychologist might possibly say that she had developed an anti church and anti religious complex caused by a legalistic religious education. But in both cases, the diagnosis of the psychiatrist and psychologist would be wrong. The grandmother of this girl is a car freedom who often ran cars for her granddaughter in her childhood. This car reading is a spell which overshadows this girl's life. Therefore she cannot come to Christ. Therefore she cannot pray, believe, or read the Bible. I'm almost tempted to say that the dramatic cases of fear of death or even suicide are not as dangerous and the simple cases which show lesser signs of oppression, but which go unrecognized and keep the person from the pain. 
Wir würden 3000 Grad abkosten für was ist der Feind in der Psychologie? Fortune Telling has been suggested in the first of the Almost everybody, consciously or subconsciously, falls victim to this suggestion. Second, many of these prophecies are fulfilled subconsciously by the person himself. What caused it? The fulfillment of mountains. Third, Fortune telling costs of fear. Sometimes the fear leads to short circuit reaction. Many suicides stem from this. Four. I don't know of a single case where a horoscope or a prophecy was a helpful thing. But in history, we have enough examples where horoscopes and prophecies have done much harm. I could give you many examples, but time is short. After the message, we have time for questions. And if you like to hear more examples, I'm ready to give you. But now the problem. What does the Bible say about fortune telling? In other words, when you tell a belief, a woman or a man, who is a medium or a wizard shall be put to death. He shall be sold with stone. Their blood shall be upon them. Isn't that clear that understands the language? Nothing has to be added to this. In the Old Testament, people were punished by stoning for the following thing. The daughter is born in the end. Blasphemy and sorcery. Sorcery was also blasphemy, for here man turns to dark power well. There are people today who try to make astrology acceptable as a science. Let us hear what the prophet Isaiah has to say to this in chapter 4 7. 13 to 14. Thou must hear it in the multitude of thy tongue. Let now the astrologer, the stargazer, the monthly prognosticator stand up and take me from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as power, the fire shall burn. They shall not deliver themselves of the power of the flame. Here it is clearly stated that the astrologers will not escape from the land of God. In fact, there are even Christians who believe in horoscopes. I even met a minister who first cast a horoscope in different counseling cases for the person seeking counsel. <coughs> so that you will be able to advise him rightly. This minister told me the following example. A woman came to him and complained about her unhappy marriage. He asked her for her birthday. He cast a horoscope for her and told her in the next visit, You are to blame for the trouble in your marriage. According to your horoscope during the last four years, you have carried on the thousands of prayer with another man. What can we say to this? Only one thing. What has Christ to do with the liar? The New Testament gives us also some straight points on fortune telling. We heard before that. 18. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought the owner much gain by truth making. He followed all of us, writing, These men are servants of the most high law, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. 
and this he did for many days. But Paul was annoyed and prayer to say to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the young. Should not Paul have declared that it was the privilege of such good of visiting? No. The Apostle Paul had the gift of discerning of spirits. He could be through this woman and command the forces and the spirit to leave this woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul did not allow the mystery of spirit. He was not deceived by the pious verb. You see, if the Apostle Paul would live today, he would not call St. Kingston a prophetess, but he would command, come out, you angry spirit. St. Kingston is not a prophetess. She is a sinner of God's attempt. According to the Bible, both in the Old and New Testament, both are telling in every form, even in a pious psalm, comes from the Lord. But we think we still have not reached the end of this problem. What well, else is given if you go to the event, no great part of time? There is one pandemic, there is another question, the problem of confidence and trust. Who should be our leader and guide? Some years ago, the reporter asked the old man, How old are you, old timer? The white haired man smiled and answered, Only 93 years old. The reporter's face showed surprise. My, who held up now? Held up now? said the old man. No. I have been up well, sir. What do you mean? asked the reporter. Young man, I am not ashamed to tell you. Many years ago, I gave my life to Christ, and he has up well, blessed me, and kept me. It is the secret of that. Could it become the secret of our life as well? The right renunciation of all the thoughts and telling is the commitment of our life to Jesus. The real mastery of all insecurity and fear of the future is found in the fulfillment of the world of Jesus. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. The overcoming of all discouragement in our life is found in the promise. Lo, I am with you all days, even unto the end of the world. The prophet Isaiah knew the secret of a secure and guided life. His Lord had told him personally, Fear not, for I am with you. This secret was also revealed to Jesus' disciples with the promise in John 10, 28, No one shall pluck them out of my hand. An artist in Paris, in France, gave a wonderful answer to this. He sculpted a lot of art with an uplifted open hand. In the hand, a ball of clay. On top of it, two small human figures. Underneath the earth, la main de Dieu, the hand of God. This was his short credo, God's hand holds the universe, God's hand holds our planet Earth, God's hand holds mankind, God's hand holds my small life. It is the right answer for all fear of life and fear of the future. My life is his hand, the guiding light. I have been upheld, said the old man. I want to be upheld, upheld by Jesus. 
Or do you know anything better? I would rather tell you this reason than to know everything you had with the process seller. But nobody perishes with me. I've experienced this as following him for 43 years. There is one of us who still suffers from fear and insecurity. Let me encourage you to venture out in faith right now. Trust Jesus and commit your life to him. The New Testament tells us that one of the disciples are very blessed. They were in a boat and a terrible storm swept over them. Then Jesus approached them walking on the water. Peter was close by them. He called, Master, bid me to come to you. Jesus called them. Peter could actually walk on the way as long as he, he kept his eyes on Jesus. That is a solution to all of our problems. Jesus calls us to come to him. Let us put our feet trustingly on the trusting grave. As long as our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we are being after. There is a choice of all as our eyes upon our Lord. May the Lord grant that all of us will walk in faith. We will never regret it. Amen. And now we have time for questions and answers. But please speak slowly and distinctly. I have already a few German trains. I have trouble not understanding it.
The Vangelist, I won't say about it so many times. The Vangelist has 6,000 spiritistic churches and about 40 spiritistic churches. California is the stronghold of spiritism in the United States. But we have satanic cows in all six towns. The satanic cows in Francisco and Los Angeles, in New York, in Chicago, and other places. But how the other countries of the world? I was seven times in Brazil. Brazil increased the number of the Spiritists in 15 years from 10 million to 15 million. Half of the Brazilians belong to a Spiritistic Church or a Spiritistic Church. It's a terrible situation. In a town like Rio de Janeiro has 7,000 Spiritistic Churches. In Brazil, 95% of the medical doctors belong to a Spiritistic Association. Brazil has 150 Spiritistic newspapers. Or go into another country, Philippines. I was there three times. The Philippines had 35 million inhabitants, among them about 30 million citizens. You see, alcohol system is increasing, and I think it is a sign of the nearness of the second coming of the Lord. <coughs> In the last 20 or 30 years before the Lord is coming, we have a growing chaos. Growing confusion in all areas. Therefore, we, all, we have also so many extreme movements today. They leave the so called biblical line of the Bible and the changing congregation, and, and they are all always going from one church to another to find a new sensation. Other questions? I didn't hear that one, Adding. Oh, I know this is the black hole. 